If you're using 4G or 5G broadband to get online at home, you might be considering using an antenna to get better, more consistent speeds. Recently, Waveform was kind enough to send us their Quad Pro directional antenna. So in this video, we've tested and reviewed the Waveform Quad Pro to see what it's like to set up and use and to see what sort of download speed boost you can expect with this antenna. But before we begin, make sure to click the link in the description to the Quad Pro on Amazon to see what prices they're offering on it at the moment and to learn more about this antenna. So what exactly is the Quad Pro and how does it differ from other antennas? The Quad Pro is a directional 4x4 MIMO antenna, meaning unlike a lot of other antennas sold in the UK, like the one that comes with the 3 5G Outdoor Hub, the Quad Pro is designed to be pointed at the nearest mast to help you get the best possible speeds. Most other antennas, like the Waveform Quad Mini, which we've also reviewed on this channel, the omnidirectional, meaning while you do have to consider where you'll get the best signal, you don't have to think so much about aiming the device or where exactly the nearest mast is. Directional antennas can be a bit more tricky to set up, but they're designed to get you better speeds and can be especially helpful if you're on the very edge of signal from the nearest mast. They just help to concentrate the antenna's focus a bit more towards the nearest mast if you haven't aimed properly, helping you get the best possible signal. And it's also worth mentioning quickly, 4x4 means there are four incoming and outgoing antennas inside the Quad Pro, which means as an end user, to get the most from this antenna, you'll need to use a 4G or 5G router with four antenna ports. So we'll be using the GeoLiner GLX3000 to test this external antenna. So when you get the Quad Pro, you'll need to install it on the outside of your house and point it at the nearest mast. We'll explain how to find out where the nearest mast is later in the video. And then using the extension cable in the kit, if needed, and this window entry cable, you can feed the signal back indoors into your 5G router to help it pick up better signal. When you buy the Quad Pro on Amazon, you have the choice of this full kit, which comes with all the other hardware we just mentioned, or you can also buy the antenna by itself for a much cheaper price if you have the right cables and mounting equipment already. But if you buy the full kit, here's what you get in the box. The first thing you'll notice is the manuals, which go quite in depth, which is good to see. There's sort of a main manual for the antenna, discussing how to get the best signal and that sort of thing, and separate instructions for the mounts as well. Then you'll see the extension cable, which is weatherproof and gives you 20 feet to work with. You don't necessarily have to use this. There's about three or four feet of cable already attached to the antenna. If you're installing it somewhere really close to where you want to set up the router, then this is the window entry cable, which has a flat section in the middle. You can clamp in a window without letting any air in and without disrupting data transmission. You just hook one end of this onto the extension cable or onto the antenna itself, and then the other end can be plugged into your router. There are some screws and screw anchors. If you want to attach part of this to a wall, not to mention double-sided tape on the back of both of these boxes, and you can also open each of them to change the direction that the cable is coming out, if this helps with your installation. There are some SMA to pigtail adapters. We haven't ever personally encountered this pigtail standard, on routers in the UK at least, but let us know in the comments if you've seen it. There's also TS9 to SMA adapters, if you need those. And in this other box, is some of the mounting equipment. You can drill this bracket into a brick wall using these bolts, and then you can attach the antenna to this J-shaped pole mount. Waveform tells us you want to keep the Quad Pro flat to the horizon unless you can see the tower is on a hill or down in a valley away from you. So the design of this mount can help you dial in the angle of the Quad Pro more easily. There's also a spanner and some more bolts and a Velcro strap and some cable ties for cable management. And the design of the pole can also help you get a little bit more height on the antenna as well. But because of how it's pointed and because the whole thing is made of metal, it can be a bit prone to lightning strikes, which is why there are some grounding clips on the mounting bracket. And in this box, there's another mounting option, which Waveform calls a flex mount. This one allows you to put the Quad Pro directly on a wall or onto a pole. There are these U-bolts you can use to wrap around a pole, which then attach to the base of the mount. And finally, you'll get to the Quad Pro itself. It's fairly big, about the size of a dinner tray maybe, but more square, and weighs about 2.3 kilos. For context, Waveform's other antenna, the Quad Mini, weighs about 500 grams, and is about a third the size, maybe less, because it's a lot thinner.
So the first thing you want to do is scan the QR code on the box and this will set up a WhatsApp conversation with them where you can get what they call a virtual site survey where they'll recommend the best place to point the antenna and show you where the nearest masts are to help you get the best signal. We found this pretty helpful and their team is pretty knowledgeable over text if you want help when setting up the antenna. Same for the quad mini as well if you decide to buy that instead. Once you know where you need to aim the quad pro, the next step is to do some speed tests to ensure you found a good spot and a good angle to aim it before you mount the antenna permanently. This can be a bit tricky and is probably the biggest downside of the Quad Pro. There's no signal gauge on it like there is with the 3 5G Outdoor Hub and you really need to have the antenna in the exact spot you'll be mounting it and in the same direction you'll be pointing it to ensure you're testing it properly based on the mounting location which means you're probably going to have to get on the roof, set it up with the router and somehow hold it there while you're performing speed tests in a consistent position which can be a bit difficult depending on what your house or flat looks like. You can't just hold it at ground level for example. We tried that and really didn't get good speeds even though we can see the nearest 5G mast from our house. So we ended up having to sort of temporarily hold it on a second story windowsill which was a bit tricky because of the weight of the antenna. We found that if we had it inside behind the glass our speeds would drop off so this wasn't a good indication of what having the antenna actually installed outside would be like. Despite that though we were able to temporarily set it up outside and point it at the nearest mast to see how the Quad Pro performs in the real world. For the purposes of these tests here's how you can set up the antenna. All you really need to do is plug it into the router and then Every time you go to a new location with the antenna, make sure you unplug and plug back in the router so it can pick up the strongest network bands with the antenna in its new location. You just want to screw the SMA cables from the antenna into the router. You can use the extension cable in the middle if you want to and potentially the window entry cable if you've got the antenna sitting outside and you want to feed its signal indoors. The one thing to note is all of the cables are numbered and depending on the router you have you need to be pretty careful about where the numbers go rather than just plugging any cable into any SMA port on the router. With our router for example the number one cable goes into this port on the right then the number three cable goes into the port on the back right corner then cable number four on the back left corner and cable number two on the left side. If you google your router's name and waveform guide you'll be able to find their specific instructions for your router on their website or you can also just WhatsApp them to get help with this. For these tests, we'll be using the 3 network with the GLINet GLX3000. So to assess baseline performance, we first ran some tests with just the router's bunny ear antennas installed. And at the time, we'd normally get a download speed of about 200 megabits and an upload speed of about 5 megabits. But with the Quad Pro, we saw a significant increase in our speeds, going up to about 350 megabits on average, with an upload speed of about 13 megabits, peaking at a download speed of more than 400 Mbps, with an upload speed of a bit over 16. This is with the Quad Pro on a second story, pointed at the nearest mast outside of the window. We found from testing you don't have to be extremely accurate with how you point the Quad Pro. So if you can't see the mast like we can, it's not a big issue. The beam is relatively wide and the tilt up or down doesn't make a huge difference as long as you're roughly flat to the horizon. So you don't need to worry about wind for example, knocking it a few centimeters and this affecting your speeds. But even though we got really good speeds with it, we didn't end up installing the Quad Pro permanently for a few reasons. Firstly, this side of the house facing the mast where we got really good speeds would be quite tricky to mount the Quad Pro on. We could have tested more locations and we did try pointing it at another mast, but this process of logging the thing around everywhere and doing heaps of speed tests, we probably did more than 300 tests over the course of two days, did get a bit tiresome after a while. But what we found was the Quad Mini actually performed better. After we took the Quad Pro back inside, we put the Quad Mini on the window. It's really easy to mount with these suction cups that Waveform includes and then ran some speed tests. We found that in general, our speeds with the Quad Mini are actually a bit higher than with the Quad Pro, going up to about 440 megabits 
with an upload speed of about 22. Because the Quad Mini is so much easier to install, and essentially two-thirds the price of the Quad Pro at the moment, we found it worked better for our needs. We might have been able to get better speeds with the Quad Pro if we mounted it properly, but we ran into a bit of a chicken and egg situation. We don't have the confidence to mount it if the speeds aren't better than the Quad Mini, but we don't know if the speeds are definitely better than the Quad Mini, because we didn't end up drilling into our house to install it on a second story. To solve this problem, it would be really good to see Waveform include a signal gauge on their antennas, like 3 does, with their 5G outdoor hub, which we've taken a look at in another video, if you want to check that out. So ultimately, should you buy the Waveform Quad Pro? We think it's definitely worth looking at, if you know you can install it fairly easily. It works really well, we got a really good speed boost using it, and Waveform support is also really helpful. But if you're just getting started with antennas, and you want something you can install on the outside of a window, and move around really easily, the Waveform Quad Mini might be a better choice. Remember, click the links in the description to the Waveform Quad Pro and Quad Mini on Amazon to compare their pricing at the moment, and see what deals Waveform is offering. And if you want an all-in-one data, router, and antenna bundle, click the link in the description to the three home broadband coverage checker, and put in your postcode to see if you can get their outdoor 5G hub plans at your address when you're watching this. And if you have any questions about the Waveform Quad Pro, or about choosing an antenna more broadly, leave us a comment below, and we'll reply as soon as we can.